I have, a, I have a question about the, your view on, on the government or public sector openness or, or pro-open source around the world. I, I guess you see different different countries and their public sectors. Are there any good good ones that are kind of more proactive than the others? So, and, and, and do you see co cooperation between the public sectors in... in are you planning to relocate or...? <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're planning to relocate, um, for the moment I'd have to recommend Spain. The food is very good, life is cheap, and uh, you just want, might want to make sure that these European Central Bank grants go through. Um, on a more serious note, uh, is it, some of the Spanish provinces, like Extremadura, Andalusia, and uh, more recently the Basque Country, have really upped their game on free software. They've taken leadership and they're, they're not just using free software because it's something that you can download off the web and it doesn't cost anything at that very moment. Uh, they really understand free software and use it as a tool to build a regional economy. Uh, some years ago, someone from the Andalusian government got up and said, well, in Andalusia we slept through the industrial revolution. We cannot afford to sleep through the digital revolution. And then they made a rule that the public sector would have to prefer free software when they buy it. And they made a rule that if the public sector has applications developed for itself, they have to release those applications back to the public. Um, and recently the, the, the effect of that has been that the Andalusian free software companies have become very good at um, their various specialties because they've had so much business. And um, so the, the stereotype lazy southern Spaniards, the Andalusians, all of a sudden we're coming to the stereotype thrifty northern Spain Basque country people and they were eating their lunch because um, the, 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 the Andalusian companies were so much better. And then the, the Basque country businesses went to the government and said, we need a law like those guys in Andalusia. We need, we need you to release free software back to the public so we can make more money. And uh, so Andalusia just, uh, sorry, the Basque country just went to pass that law. So yes, um, Spain is actually, many, many places in Spain are actually doing good. Then Italy just passed a rule saying that, they, that it was the big thing that they did it in August, which in Italy means basically little more activity than Christmas Day. Um, they said that, yes, the public sector, when they buy software, has to either prefer software that is developed especially for them, or they have to buy free software. And only when that's not possible, for some reason, they can go and buy proprietary software, but to explain why. We're going to see how that turns out in practice, but it's definitely progress. Then you have the German government, which has no systematic approach whatsoever, and the British government, which, which has a systematic approach that consists of saying nice things occasionally and then uh, going into the exact other direction. <coughs> so if you, if you want free software, then you probably have to go south. There's a bright spot in Sweden uh, where they have a big sector framework contract for free software. So they've gone and uh, procuring free software on a systematic level for the public sector. They're a bit more enlightened, uh, but that's still a pioneer thing. Let's hope that many more will follow. Um, I'd like to pick up on Carsten's uh, assessment of the British, actually. Uh, and I, I, essentially, I, I essentially think he's being too kind to the British government. I'm um, sorry. Um, <laughs> I mean, what, what is fascinating for me about the British government and open source software, sorry, Carsten, free software, um, is that I don't understand what they're talking about. I have never understood what they're talking about. And I've never understood why they started talking about it. And I've never understood what's going on in their minds. Because, um, you know, for some reason, back in 2002, the British government also started talking about the need for open standards and open source software. But there was no underpinning analysis of, of why. <coughs> now, uh, I, I think that in overall terms, there's a, there's a hidden strength and a hidden weakness in all of that. In that, you know, we don't do Grand Projet in Britain. You know, the nearest we got to the Grand Projet was possibly the Channel Tunnel and perhaps the Olympic Games. The Olympic Games were built by an Australian, I think. Um, so, 
we don't do Grand Projet. I don't think free software or open source software is ever going to become something. But, but, but it won't happen because of a diktat from Whitehall. Because the funny thing about free open source software is it is happening in the it, it is happening in the public sector randomly by people who have taken decisions to do stuff. And they've taken decision stuff despite the the meter high stack of guidance telling them to do it like this or do it like that. They're just taking the come and have a go if you think you're hard enough because I've decided to do it like this rather than do it like that. And within that decision, it's been decisions to use open source software. For example, uh, as I mentioned yesterday, the, um, the ophthalmic consultants in more fields are doing a, a project for e-health records based on GPL version 3 software. I mean, it's absolutely, you know, but they, they, they seem to have cut out you know, the Department for Health, cut out, you know, procurement rules, cut out planning, cut out, and just getting on and doing it, because that's what they fancy doing. And I think that's what will happen. It will, if, if there's going to be a free software revolution in England, we'll only notice once it's happened. Thank you.